the problem must go this afternoon. Return joy to you in the name of Jesus. Every arrow that the enemy shoots at you will rage. In the name of Jesus. I command every door of favor, every door of grace, every door of blessing to swing open for you and all the others in the name of Jesus.
The period before your wedding is the foundation laying period for the family. The period, this period that you are right now before you get married is the time that you begin to lay the foundation for a solid family. Once you get married, you are only building on the foundation that you have laid. Whether it was a good foundation, either it was a bad foundation, but by the mercies of God, the righteous can do something better with a bad foundation. And that is the reason you are in church today. You are smart even if you are married and the foundation has not been good. I know that God, who goes back to lay a better foundation, will lay a better foundation for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Making the right choice of a life partner and the quality of your courtship will help you to determine how successful your marital and your family life will be. When you make the right choice for your life partner, remember I'm talking to the ones that are not married. When you make a right choice for your life partner and the quality of the time that you spend together when you are in courtship, will determine how solid your family life will be. If you decide that I'm just going to choose whoever comes, I will go on, on, on give me, Christian Mingo. Sometimes you even find good ones. But some people go on the other one that is not Christian Mingo. You know, you know those ones. They, or, or if somebody sets you up and match makes you, you don't know them from anywhere. And they just, I was watching the Big Bang Theory. You know the new series just came out. So I was watching it on Thursday. Hallelujah. Thursday night. It comes on Thursday nights at 8 o'clock. For your information. <laughs> and Kutapali, my very good Indian friend, has been looking for a wife for all the time since the beginning. He used to be shy, he was not able to talk. He had a problem with talking to women. Anytime he saw women, he would go numb. But after a while, God delivered him because I prayed for him. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, but the, the, what I'm trying to say is, anytime he dated, he will fall out the wagon. He didn't, he couldn't, you know. So his father, his friends, now decided that they would match make him. They will send, you know, somebody to him so that they could get together. And sent this girl to him, and I felt sorry for him. Because this man could not handle the girl. The girl was like, let's get to business. You, our finances, we're talking about it. You know, she was so, at the end of the day, he wasn't sure if he would go with the girl, so he watched the next on Thursday. We are not done yet. Hallelujah. But this man, I'm just using him as an example, he was set up by his family, his mother and his father. You don't need anybody to set you up. The Holy Ghost is the set hour. Hallelujah. We need to make the right choice for our own life partners. We need to have a quality courtship so that we can have a successful marital life. Hallelujah. Now I have two principles for you for a successful family life. The first principle that you want to look into, that we want to look into, is to seek God with all your heart. The first principle, as a single woman, as a single man, you are still, you are, and if you are getting to the age that you need to get married, the first person you need to seek is God. You are not seeking God for a husband or a wife. You are seeking God so that you have a relationship with Him. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 32. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 32. But I want you to be without care. He who is unmarried cares for the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. If you are not married, your first assignment is to seek to please the Lord. Be a God chaser. Whoever chases after God gets gold. And if you are a man, if you are chasing after God, you will get the perfect match for you. If you are a woman and you are chasing after God, you will get your own man in the mighty name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. These things mean every other good thing. A husband, a wife, 
man after God's own heart, like Brother Jew was standing out upright there, you know, when he started seeking God, God gave him a beautiful woman, hallelujah. Yeah. And it's the same testimony that you will have in the mighty name of Jesus. The only thing that we tell people when they are looking for husband and for wife is stay in the presence of God. Chase God and you will find God. Rebecca found Isaac when he was meditating. Even though the, the, uh, Abraham sent somebody, uh, his servant, in the book of Genesis chapter 24, to go and look for a bride for Isaac. But do you know that Isaac did not run around? He didn't follow that man, Eliezer, or whatever his name is, the, 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 the servant of Abraham. He didn't follow him to go look. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 24, verse 63, Genesis 24, 63, and Isaac went out to meditate in the field in the evening, and he lifted his eyes and looked, and there the candles were coming. Next verse. Then Rebecca lifted her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she dismounted from her camel. I could see the slow motion. <laughs> Isaac carried his Bible in the wilderness, and he was looking up. It was like man taking a worship. Father, I worship you. Glory be to your name. I worship you. I glorify you. This man was about 40 years old at that time. And then he looked up, and he said, wow. <laughs> And he saw the donkey coming. <laughs> and then who was on the donkey? Beautiful Rebecca. You know, with her hair. And it was, you know, how they do that movie, the love movie that we watch. And the hair, you know how you are running, and the hair will be going. And she was coming. And the, the, the gold on her neck was shining. Hallelujah. Because the servant brought gold and silver as dowry. So she was wearing some of them. This is my own version of the drama. And he looked up and saw her. And she saw him. And they live happily ever after. But what am I saying? He was meditating. He was seeking the face of God. And while he was seeking the face of God, God was getting ready his bride for him. Hallelujah. Be a chaser of God. How did Isaac learn how to seek God's face? I want to talk to you parents. The Bible talked about Abraham. He said, I, will I not reveal my secrets to Abraham? It's because I know that he would teach his children to seek my way. The Lord told Abraham that. The Lord said to Abraham, He said, I will show, I will show him, I will show him my words so that he can know it and show it to my children. Parents, your duty is to pray for your children's future. Since I have given back to my children, I pray over their spouses. It doesn't bother me if they bring, if they come home with a Chinese guy. Yeah. It really does not bother me. <laughs> the only requirement is that that man is a God chaser. Yes. I'm not going to ask them to go back to Africa or wherever we come from to go and find a way. I'm not going to force them to. They can choose because I know whatever they choose is going to be from God. Yes. And I pray for them. Since their birth, every time I remember, I don't do it every day, but every I remember, especially now that they are getting older and they might be choosing very soon, you know, after they graduate from university and go for their master's degrees and they get their master's Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> but the role of the parents is to, is, to, is to pray. We are not to match make for our children. We cannot say, that, ah, there is this boy from my village. I want you to go, I want to, I want to set you guys up. I come from, I, I remember, you know, so many stories about setups that end wrongly, when ends badly. So parents, a word to the parents, pray for your children. Don't set them up. Hallelujah. Teach your children to connect with God, to keep the way of the Lord, and don't just match make them. Hallelujah. Yeah. For the single person, be a successful Christian. A successful Christian is 
a Christian that is able to pray, able to read the word, attend fellowship, and serve in the kingdom of God. A successful Christian is somebody who is serious with God. Hallelujah. So for you to find, to build a solid marital foundation, you must be a successful Christian. You must be a Christian who knows God, who knows who they are in Christ, and who knows how to seek God with all their hearts. A successful Christian to you men is a man who has work, not a bozo, a boaz. A boaz is a man that has a job. If, if you don't have a job, you have no reason to have a wife. Yes, <laughs> Did you know that Adam had a job before it was given to him? Yes. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 2 that when Adam, when God created everything, he called Adam and said your job is to tend it. Before, even before then, he said name the animals. Adam had to name every animal. Every, and whatever, the Bible said whatever he called them, so they were to God. So he did a lot of research, looked at a butterfly and said, okay, what can I call this? Let me see. Now, there was no Google at that time, but I know he had Google in his head. Let me see what it would be called. Okay, something with two flags, blah, 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 I will name it butterfly. And whatever he named it, because he had the mind of God, because he was a God chaser at that time, he was able to name those things. And the Bible told him that you walk in this, on this ground, till it, bring out everything, you will be successful from there. And then God created us, the women, to be able to help him as the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Be as good as the person you would like to marry. Do you know that every man wants a Christian as a woman? Yes. They go out to discourse, to parties and everything, but they, when they want to marry, they will come to church. Yes. 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 That is Jim Jim as a Christian. But I want to tell you, and the same thing for, for ladies. Ladies, after you get to a certain age, you start getting desperate. Ah, anything, Sha. You know, this one it is it's okay. I will take it like that. Don't like, send yourself short. Your time is coming. And God makes everything perfect, beautiful, in its time. It will be your time in the name of Jesus. If you want to marry a, a Christian, be a Christian. If you want to marry a virgin, keep yourself as a virgin. There's no reason why you would be, as a man, you'd be going around and, you know, doing stuff with all girls around and say, ah, ah, I have my virgin reserved for me. You don't deserve a virgin. <laughs> keep yourself pure. And that's for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second thing that I want you to pay attention to as a principle for building a strong home or a strong family is to marry a born again Christian. Marry a born again Christian. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 to 15 in the Amplified Version. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Do not make mismatted alliances, mistaken alliances with them, or come under a different yoke with them, inconsistent with your faith. For what partnership have light as right living and right standing with God with iniquity and lawlessness? Or how can light have fellowship with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and Belial, the devil? Or what has a believer in common with an unbeliever? What agreement can there be between a temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Even as God said, I will dwell in and with and among them, and I will walk and in and I will walk in and with and among them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So the second thing that you need to do is to look for a believer, a born-again Christian. And 
for my precious daughters who are here who are waiting on God. Some of them have come to me and they have said, Oh, I met this guy, and is this? All of you know the first question I ask. The first question I ask is, Is he a Christian? Some of them will say, Ah, yes, he is a Christian. The second, the way I get to know is, Which church does he go to? <laughs> so when I ask which church does he go to, they say, ah, He doesn't really go all the time. So, where are we going here? One of my precious daughters, who I love very much, came to me not too long ago. She said, Mommy, two people are running after me. I said, God is good. <laughs> Seven men who hold on to your skin. She said, I said, okay, so what is it? She said, eh, I don't know which one to choose. I said, okay, so, eh, which one? Okay, tell me about that. One of them is a Muslim. <laughs> Are we now? I said, okay, this, that's, I didn't to do that as loudly as she did. But in my mind, I was like, okay, thank you, Jesus. And the second one called, eh, he's a Christian, but I'm not exactly sure. So I gave her this scripture. I said, Daughter, go and read. I didn't even, I mean, what would I say? I didn't say anything. I said, Take this scripture. Read it next week. Let's talk. So she took it home and read it. And the, and the following week, she said, Mommy, I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> I have had you. You didn't even have to talk. I have had you. That's a daughter that I love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in that scripture, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 15, three words are of interest from there. The first word is fellowship. And I put it up there. Fellowship in Greek means metoshe, it means intercourse. Now we are talking about do not be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. And so for you to have fellowship in that word, the word fellowship there means intercourse. Do not intercourse yourself with an unbeliever. So what fellowship, what intercourse, what connection would a believer have with an unbeliever? The second word there is communion. It's the Greek word is anonia. It also means fellowship, but it means participation, contribute, share. What can a Christian share with an unbeliever? Now we are talking about a family, setting up your foundation. Number three is concord. It means symphonesis, means symphony, everything, unity, agreement, harmony, accord, communion. When you take these three components, this fellowship, this communion, concord, if you take it out of marriage, marriage is doomed. If there is no fellowship, if there is no communion, if there is no unity, if there is no fellowship, you don't fellowship one another, you don't talk to one another, there is no communication. But what would you communicate with an unbeliever? Yesterday at the new members class, we were talking about choosing a Christian friend. I said if your best friend is a Muslim, and you have an issue, and you want to pray about it, and you are speaking in tongues, what do you expect your Muslim friend to say? Allah Akbar. And they say Allah Akbar. So how would that connection be together? So there would not be a fellowship. There would not be a, 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 a sharing. There would not be an agreement or a harmony. When and when this is not in a marriage, that marriage has no foundation. So when you are looking for a husband or a wife, look for a born again Christian. You might be sitting there and thinking, eh, some of the people would say they are born again. But even those who are not born again are better than them. Don't you ever think that, especially when you are getting to a desperate level. You think, eh, yeah, they said they go to church, even born again once. Even those who are not born again are not better than them. If you go after those who are not born again, because the born again ones are not as good, you have started on a level of disobedience. <laughs> if you go after a, a not born again Christian person, you start it with disobeying God. And there is no way you can be in dis disobedience to God and have a good life. I always tell people, I say, 
if he's born again, half of my problem is over. Because I know at least he will show up in church, he will hear the word, it is the word of God that will change him, the Holy Spirit will live in him, and little by little he will start changing. But somebody that has no Christ, where do you begin from? The seed of righteousness is not even in him yet. And let me say a word of warning to you ladies, you cannot change a man. You are not the changer. The Holy Spirit is the one that will change a man. No matter how good looking that man is, no matter how tall that can answer as Pastor Yami, that man is, you cannot change him. Hallelujah. It's, it's, it's darker now, it used to be light. Very light before, but the son of America has been to the ground. Remember? We used to call him Ele. Hallelujah. If family success is your goal as a Christian, you must ensure that you are married to a Christian, a born again Christian. A believer and an unbeliever cannot have a real fellowship, a real communion, or a real agreement. There is a fundamental difference between a saved person and an unsaved person. They belong to two different kingdoms. The kingdom of God is not the same as the kingdom of the devil. Any man that has no unregenerated spirit that is not born again does not belong to the kingdom of God. And it is raw and simple. I know it's a very difficult pill to swallow sometimes, but it is the truth. It, it will make your life easier at the end of the day. If you take into account those people who marry, and their, uh, their spouses are Christians. You and they stay with it, they stick with it. You will find out that as time goes on, the marriage gets better. But if they are not Christians, if they are unbelievers, you will find out that the first struggle you will have is as a Christian, if you are truly born again, is how to live with this man that does not believe in God, that is not a Christian. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Those of us who have done it, the Bible says, if the foundation be faulty, what can the righteous do? The righteous will pray. The righteous will fast and ask God, God, touch my marriage. Touch my heart. Touch the heart of my husband. Turn his heart towards you. Hallelujah. But the time that you are spending praying that prayer, do you know that you will be praying for something else? You could be using it to pray for something else if you laid a very good foundation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The cornerstone of every successful family is a personal relationship with Christ. There is no meeting point between a Christian and an unbeliever. It is unbiblical to marry a non-Christian. The book of Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Amos 3 3. Amos 3 3. I think we're having a little issue with our... Okay. Do two work together except they make an appointment and have agreed? Let's look at the New King James Version. Amos 3, 3, New King James Version. Can two work together unless they are agreed? Genesis chapter 24, verse 3. When it was time for our guy Isaac to get married, his father called his son and he said, and I will make you swear by the Lord. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back again. A little bit. Verse 1. Now Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Verse 2. So Abraham said to the oldest servant of his house, who ruled over all that he had, please put your hand under my thigh. And I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that you will not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. Next verse. But you shall go to my country and to my family and take a wife for my son, Isaac. Even Abraham, that was not, that, it, that, was, that didn't know about all this, he didn't have the Holy Spirit in him. He dwelled in Canaan, he dwelled among heathens. Canaan at that time where he dwelt was a land that was full of unbelievers, so to say, in this age. And he told his servant, he said, please, I don't want my son to marry among the unbelievers that I am with. 
I want you to take to go home, back home, to the believers, to the church, to the kingdom of God, and take a wife for my son. Abraham said that. So the, the most important decision that we can do, like Abraham, is to pray that our children will marry in Christ. Amen. They will not go and carry somebody from the club or somebody from you know out there and say, hey, this is the one that I want to marry. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us. Know yeah. also that you cannot change anyone, you are not the Holy Spirit. Marrying an unbeliever is disobedience to the word of God and it is building on a faulty foundation. Number three, there are three things that I want to talk to you about. The three dimensions of connection. You must be connected. And there are three ways that you need to be connected. Remember we are building foundation for a solid family life. So if you are looking for a spouse, you yourself, number one, you must be born again. Number two, you must find a born again person like yourself. Like the guy like. Hallelujah. And number three, there must be a connection between you. You must be connected physically. Meaning that there must be a physical connection. When you see that guy, your heart must skip a bit. Is it true? We are not only spiritual. You must be connected intellectually, that means in the soul, emotionally, and you must be connected spiritually. Physical connection, you should be physically attracted to one another. Don't base your relationship only on the physical though, because beauty will fade. The tall, dark, and handsome guy, one day, belly will be bigger. Uh, uh, the woman, everything will begin to go south. You will need something to be pulling them up. And sometimes those things don't even hold them up. Wrinkles will appear. The tall guy man will begin to bend and short and shorten. Then it, it, it remains what? It remains spiritual connection. Because the beauty will fade. The tallness will go away sometimes. But once you are connected, now for the foundation, you must be physically connected with one another. You can't look at that person and say, ah, I will just close my eyes and kiss them on my leg. <laughs> Closing the eyes means that, you know, you are, this is the person you are living with for the rest of your life. You can't be closing your eyes every day. So make sure that there is a connection physically. You see that person, I like them, I like them. Hallelujah. I've been with this guy for almost 24 years now. He still shocks me. <laughs> you know, I'm <I'll> <laughs> every day. <laughs> the second part of connection is your soul and emotional connection. You must be emotionally and intellectually connected. Do you know that Abigail made, made a mistake marrying neighbor? The Bible said Nabal was foolish. That's his name. Abigail was beautiful. And Abigail was wise. But she made a mistake. But thank God, that was the foundation that was ruined from the beginning. But she went to her own heart role, David. The man, the man after God's heart. So one, well, you must be emotionally and intellectually connected. If you have a PhD, and the person that you are attracted to has primary six. God will help you. Send that person to school before you get married. Because while you are speaking your own, what English did we learn again last Sunday? Paris Pasu. That person is sitting there and be like, what does Paris Pasu mean? <laughs> Hallelujah. So you must be intellectually connected. You must be emotionally on the same person. Let me tell you something. If you are on emotionally unstable, you will find somebody that is emotionally unstable for yourself. So get your emotional stability in order. Be emotionally stable. Because life begins life. So be stable and look for somebody that is on the same level with you emotionally. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must have the set of similar vision and similar focus. One thing that destroys marriages, apart from money, finances, and lack of communication, is division. You have different visions. One, the vision is, I must go back to my home country 
wherever I come from, I will build 10 houses, I will put window, I will put a door, I will do this, I will do that, I will buy cars and send them to my country. And the other one's vision is, I will stay in this nation and make it. You know that is different visions there. You must, when you are dating, talk. Don't just be gazing at each other's eyes and say, I love you, I love you. Talk about your vision. Talk about what you have, what are your interests. And that is the way you will find them. You will realize that this person is either for me or not for me. Sit with one man. Talk to that man for five minutes. You will know where his direction in life is. So when you are dating and you are courting, I always encourage, and I will get there, I encourage you to go out together to safe places. But talk. Don't just eat, go to dinner and gaze at each other's eyes. Oh, I love your eyes. Your, 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 your hair is like the strings of a guitar. And your, your, your face is like the face of the mountains of Addis Ababa. Ah, what are they do that? <laughs> like David was telling me, what's her name last week? <laughs> I was like strings of a guitar. The man, that, that sounds like an insult. <laughs> You must have things, but don't base your relationship on this only as well. The most important one is your spiritual connection. This is the most important one. You must agree doctrinally. Go to Hebrews chapter 6 verses 1 to 2. Hebrews 6, 1 to 2. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Verse 2. Of the doctrines of baptism, of laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. What I'm saying here is you must have similar spiritual or, or doctrinal values. You get married to somebody, they don't believe that you must be healed or you are healed already. And, and something happens, and you are praying, God, heal my husband. And your husband is thinking, ah, well, when it is time, when it, when, when it is your turn, the, the alarm clock sounds in heaven, you go. You know, that's not balanced values. So you must have the same doctrinal value. The number of our years is 120. And if you marry a girl or a woman that thinks that it's only 70 years old, you know that something, like, how would you manage for, for, for 50 years after they are, they are gone? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you must have similar spiritual or doctrinal value. You must pray together. Talk with each other. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 12, 34, it says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When you begin to talk to one another, you find out that what they believe in. Some of you will say, I thought he's a Christian. He didn't even tell me he's not a Christian. He, what has he been talking about? When you sit, you sit with a man and all he's talking about is a stock in New York market, he's talking about his IT job, he's talking about uh, his mama, you know what he's about. Not a nation of honey, let's pray together. Let's share the work together. You will know that they, 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 they are not of God. Or they, are, they may be a Christian but they are not rooted deeply. They still need a little bit more work. Appear in public together. If he can bring you to his social gathering, then he is proud of you. If he, if he doesn't want to bring you out, he says, Mommy and Daddy are having dinner, and they invited me, and he doesn't want to take you, he's not proud of you. You begin to think about it. Okay, what is going on here? He must be proud to take you places. He must be proud, proud, he's proud to brag you, but brag about you to his friends, to his family, to his relatives. Communicate with each other. Communication is very, very important. If you are going out with somebody, you are cutting someone, laying a foundation, and he's not talking to you. Let me tell you something. After you get married, there will be times that you may not be able to talk together alone for a time, for a while, because you get busy. You already have children. You are married the children. You are carrying the children. The husband is gone to work. The time that you are laying the foundation, you must be talking with one another. You must be communicating with one another so that it can translate into your relationship, into your marital relationship. Talk together. Text each other. Send sweet nonsenses to one another. I love you, baby. 
My husband does that every time, even up to now. He will send me a text every day. I love you. And I will read it, maybe, and then I will send back, I love you too. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you are in a relationship with a man, and he doesn't think about you, or a woman, and she doesn't think about you, for one month, don't, they, you don't live together in the same environment, and you don't communicate, forget it. That person, whatever it is, has is somebody else, it's not you. Yeah. Hallelujah. So there must be communication with one another. You must be able to communicate with each other. Keep yourselves pure. Don't go to a brother's house and have night vigil. And so we are praying. Night at night, he's in his boxers. And you come, Slingo, and you start. Like, by the end of the morning, you start repenting. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't do that. Don't move in with a man that you are not married to. It spoils your dignity. Keep yourself pure for your for the time that God is ready for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't sample men. Oh, I want to know if it's really good. <laughs> oh, I want to know if. Ah, what if it's not? Those are the questions that I hear. What if it's not good? What if oh, you know we can't? Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> the bring children to church today. And even my teenagers are looking at oh my goodness, what is mommy talking about? But don't sample. Don't submit your lips to men. It's not meat. Don't. Keep yourself pure. Keep your heart pure. Keep your heart pure. Read the scriptures. Hallelujah. That there is time for everything. Yes. There will be a time that there is there is no restriction. There must be formal engagement and wedding for a solid foundation. Don't just move in with a man. Don't just move in with a woman. There must be formal. If you've been with us for some time, if you tell us, I like this girl, we will counsel you or okay, we will okay, we have done this, okay, 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 now let's go back, let's set the foundation right. You must be engaged, you must get married, you must have a wedding. You can't just be living together without getting married to one another. Number one, it is not culturally right. Number two, it is not scripturally right, which is the most important part. Pay dowry on the woman. Don't just take them. Every culture, they pay dowry one way or the other. Yes. When Abraham sent Eliezer, to Rebecca's family, carry gold, carry silver, carry everything. Go to give them. That's how to do it. Pay dowry on the woman. It gives respect and dignity to that woman. Marry her legally, so that when she's walking, she, when she's talking, she can go like this, and people can see her ring. Hallelujah. Yeah. When people are seeing your wife's ring, they are saying like, "Wow, this man is a man." Not only that she's a woman, this man is a man, he's not a coward. So if you love her, put a ring on it. Yes. Don't be a girl, go under a tree, ask your friend to officiate, have a public marriage, wedding. Do it properly. You know how they do it now? They will go to Mexico. Ah, that one, Vegas. Do it properly. Don't live together without a wedding. When you wed in the church, or you, your wedding is blessed in the church, you are inviting God into your marriage. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12. Quickly. Ecclesiastes, though one may be overpowered by another, two cannot withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Once you bring your marriage or wedding into the house of God to be blessed, you invite God and a three code. And one with God is always the majority. It has been discovered that marriages conducted in church stand a greater chance of being successful than those that have not. Please, let me tell you a note of warning. Time does not correct errors. An error of yesterday remains an error today. The only thing 
that makes an error to become man a not error is correction. If you are living together without making it right, make it right today. If you are under the voice but my voice and you are living together, you are not married, there is always time to correct an error. Correct that error. We will celebrate with you. I know if I'm at work, if you do it on a weekday, pastor will be there. If you do it in the evening or a Saturday, haha, <laughs> trust me, my game, you will be all over the place. I will be there. There is always time to correct an error. And the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Quickly, I want to pray for you this afternoon. Those of you who are waiting, and those of you who have missed it somehow, and you are looking up to God for a new beginning, for a new foundation, my God Almighty will give you a song to sing in the name of Jesus. 85 verse 6 in the message translation for me. Psalm 85 is not working? Okay. Alright, I will read it from my Psalm 85. If you have your phone and message is there, that's, I would like to have that if possible. Psalm 85 verse 6. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Will you not revise, revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They, 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 actually, I have the message here. So why not help us make a fresh start, a resurrection life? Then your people will laugh and they will sing. By the anointing of success over me and over this ministry, yeah. I declare a fresh start for your family. Yeah. The Lord, this man said, Lord, would you not make us a fresh start? Give us a resurrection in life. That people, our people, that we, your people, will clap and will sing. I declare over you this afternoon a resurrection of your joy, a resurrection of your peace in your home in the name of Jesus. There is a newness that comes from God. I invoke that on you from today. Yeah.